Spoiler alert, the Bears scored 33 points. There's nothing too inspiring on the de- uh, defensive side either. I'll start with the defensive line. I just didn't see very much to inspire me from the interior of the defensive line. And this was kind of a group I was expecting to to pop a little bit more for the depth that we've added, what we have kind of invested there. And I just, I, I didn't see much that really inspired me at the D-tackle position. Very similar with the offensive line. Again, it's kind of super hard to to get uh, a full scope of what's going on up there. You know, just watching the broadcast view, watching it in real time type deal. So this is one that I'll have to go to the L22 as well and try to kind of get a better idea of who exactly stood out there. But not much really fl- flashing for me in at the defensive tackle position. Defensive end position... And I'll I'll say for the defense as a whole, I think there were some good moments, but there was an awful lot of something that we've seen in the past, and I really hope it gets cleaned up here. Just being able to get the the opposition into third and long situations and then letting them convert it over and over again. And, you know, we saw all kinds of distances, third and nine, third and 12, third and six. And I think this has a lot to do with the pass rush just not really getting home and whatever. It's it's the preseason. You know, we're talking about our depth guys playing and guys that are going to be rotating and kind of have specialized roles and situations and, and what have you. A lot of guys that won't even make the team. But got to have more from the pass rush, and that's across the whole defensive line. So I will say that I was pleasantly surprised with both Kingsley Jonathan and Javon Solomon and... Javon Solomon in particular for being a late round pick, a rookie, you know, kind of seeing through training camp, not a ton of buzz about him. Just all, hearing a lot of like, he's the first guy in, last guy out, you know, working one-on-one with coaches and, you know, other players after practice type stuff. But like on the field, I haven't been hearing a ton about Solomon. And I thought the two of them together were they were getting in the backfield and they're they're were having some disruptive plays. So a couple of guys that you know the fringe of the t- defensive end rotation when you're talking Epinesa, Groot, Von Miller ahead of them thinking maybe they only keep four and go with 6D tackles. I think if you keep seeing play like this from you know um, Kingsley Jonathan and Javon Solomon add in the new kickoff rules and you know needing guys that can tackle and having it be more of like trench play I think it might be a situation where we keep an extra D end or two and that might you know come as a blessing for, for these guys the linebacker room I was overall pretty pleased with obviously we didn't see Matt Milano play today but some of the depth pieces I thought looked pretty pretty solid Dorian Williams continues to be really great playing downhill I don't think that's ever really been a question with him it's more if he's doing the right things in the past sets the first watch through I didn't see anything really glaring about him getting beat in the past game or anything. He did have a tackle for a loss. Kind of hoping we see that next step in the development from Dorian Williams and 
have him be the first linebacker off the bench if you know somebody gets hurt or anything. And I thought he looked pretty solid today. But Deion Jones looked looked good for being, you know, who he is this to this team. You know, uh, uh, an experienced veteran that comes in and is in the right spots. I would say the player that flashed the most for me here, and you know, maybe it's a little bit of bias to the story. You know, wanting to see it more. But I thought Joe Andreessen had a really good game with some flashes in there. And the linebacker depth, as it is, we've talked about it a lot on this show. It was kind of one of those positions where it it just got massacred with injuries last year. And you could tell this offseason, Brandon Bean didn't want to play that game again and really loaded up on the position. So it's kind of tough sledding for there to be a spot for Andreessen on this roster, but it's nice seeing a guy like that come in and not look like he's in over his head, not look like he's drowning. You know, he looked like he belonged and albeit you have to put everything with the caveat of who they're playing against. You know, you're into the third, fourth stringers at this point. But he looked like he belonged to me, and maybe he doesn't crack the roster this year, but you have to root for the the homegrown talent. You know, grew up in Buffalo, went, I believe it was Lancaster High School, you know, went to UB. Those are fun stories, and you think about some of the the guys that are on this roster, Cam Lewis, who came from UB and spent time on the practice squad, and you know, had to take the long road to to a path on the roster, but it's not unheard of for this team. Jamarcus Ingram, another player like that. So, and even to an extent, if Tyler Shavers is able to make this roster, you know, those undrafted guys that come in and put in the work and kind of wait for their opportunity, I, I think we might be seeing, you know, the first little sneak peek of the next iteration of that. In the secondary, I thought there wasn't really anything. It it wasn't that noteworthy for me. And kind of like going in either direction. I don't think anybody was really bad. I don't think anybody really did much to stand out. Though the one thing that really stood out to me was Kendall Williamson and the late hit. And, you know, watching it again, it didn't look like he was, you know, trying to decapitate the dude or anything. He did look like he pulled up a little bit. That's just, it's, the, the ball was clearly, you know, far and away. The reception wasn't being made. And it's just something that you, you can't do in the NFL. There's no spot for it anymore. And... Being a guy that's, you know, already got an uphill climb to make the roster, taking a penalty like that's not going to do you any favors. So I thought that was that was one thing that stood out in a, in a negative light. The one that I think will kind of get swept under the rug and, you know, lost to history here is I thought Cam Lewis had a really nice pass breakup that, they called an illegal contact on him, and I've watched this play five, six times. There's, I don't see anything there. Is what it is, I suppose. Uh, but I thought he had a really nice play there, and I think he continues to to flash and have strong moments. And you know, with the with the safety position all banged up. It's kind of encouraging to see a level of play from him that I I would feel just about as confident with him in there as one of these other guys, Rap Hamlin. Insert the name here. I think I think the safety position lacks that like elite talent, top name that we're we're used to and 
Poyer and Hyde, obviously. But I think what Bean has been able to do is he's assembled a bunch of guys that I think are like on a fairly similar level. And like, I, I feel good about any of those, like any of these selections, if they end up being the starter, I feel, I feel pretty good about them. And I've kind of adjusted my expectations for the safety position. And I believe it was Joe Marino talking about, you know, how basically like the safety position isn't what makes or breaks a team for a playoff run. And yes, it was Joe Marino. He was talking about um, kind of evaluating Hamlin and his season where he had a ton of starts due to injury. And you never really felt like, man, this team could win it all if it wasn't for that one safety back there. And it's kind of, it's a nice perspective to look at it from because you, you can you can lose certain positions in football and have it really, you know, destroy your goals for the season. I think with how defenses are playing in today's NFL or it's kind of keep everything in front of you, come up, make tackle, you know, not not let the big plays get past you. I don't think that you need, you know, the the super high end of the spectrum from the safety group. And I think we have a bunch of guys that can be solid starters. Um, So feel pretty good about that group. Cornerbacks, I will say starters weren't in there very long, but very early in the game, Roswell Douglas had a great play, gets in the backfield, and has a tackle for a loss. So overall, I mean, the game was 33-6, to six, right? Ton to work on, ton to clean up, and thankfully it's preseason, and this isn't, you know, a doozy that we opened the, the regular season with, but put a ton of stuff on tape for... McDermott to coach these guys up on. 